Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love these watches, everything is for sale. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of every watch in today's show. We sell what we buy, and we buy what we sell, and we are always looking to build inventory. So if you wish to sell one watch or even an entire collection, we pay cash, we pay fast, we make the process super easy, guide you through it, and no upper limit on value paid. We will buy 100 Platinum Torbion from you without betting an eye. Also, we do trades, and we can often offer more value on a trade than an outright sale of your watch. So if you want to swap an old flame to a new one, reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com to buy, trade, or sell. Now, normally I open with the watch in the thumbnail, and I close with the most spectacular watch on the show, but I'm going to get your attention fast now with this 2015 Gerard Perigot triple axis tourbillon because this thing is insane and i mean absolutely insane so the watch was originally launched as a model line in 2014 what you see here is actually a white gold example made in five pieces for the 2015 model year so there are five of these in the world and the one i have on the table is number one Taking a look inside its 48 millimeter white gold case, we have the triple axis tourbillon. Not one, not two, but three axis, one thirty second, one sixty second, and one two minutes. You could see that it features a tourbillon carriage of 140 parts, weighing only 1.24 grams and beating away at three hertz. It sits inside its own little sapphire bubble. We have sapphire viewports in profile that allow you to see it more easily as it makes its gyrations, and you can even admire it from the underside through the case back triaxial tourbillon, meaning that even as it sits on your desk or dresser at night, it will still vary the position of the regulator relative to gravity, ensuring that gravity cancels out its own effects on timing. This isn't possible with a tourbillon that just spins parallel to your watch as it sits on the table. In fact, this can even cancel out the effects of gravity when the watch is on the wrist. This is a wristwatch tourbillon genuinely designed to serve as a chronometric aid. You can also see that the tourbillon carriage in steel has been black polished, beveled, and even interior anglage treated on tiny parts that are so small you need a loop to examine them in detail. Now there is a power reserve indicator on the dial. You can see it right here with the sapphire scale. I'm going to wind up the 60 hour power reserve. You can see that there's a black grill that allows you to see the movement underneath. And of course, we have a subdial with a white gold hand finished frame that allows you to read the hours and the minutes. You can see how easy it is to appreciate that triaxial tourbillon. Turn it all over. You can see that the bevels on every surface are miles wide rounded and mirrored. This is the real deal, not a machined bevel. You can also see things that even Geneva Hallmark watches often lack. First of all, golden bridges, a reference to the famous Gerard Perigo tourbillon with three golden bridges. And while they are beautifully beveled, I want to call your attention to the beveling inside the wheels. Inner circumference and spokes beveled in a fashion that is so rare, not even every Grubel 4C model includes that. Screw heads are immaculate. You can see a combination of polish, satination, and media blasting on the black barrel bridge. Turn it all over. It's a big watch at 48 millimeters, but with the movement over 36 millimeters, the watch is actually sized to fit around the movement. Let's zoom out a little bit. I'll show it to you on my wrist. This thing is unbelievable. A wrist only a little bit bigger than mine could wear this. Although it's a 48, the shape of the lugs, which you can see, is highly curved. Mitigates against fit issues, aesthetic as well as ergonomic. So yeah, 17 centimeters circumference wrist. You could wear this thing in white gold. Gerard Perigo might be the manufacturer in the industry today with the most inherent potential, both based on where it's been and where it's going. Newly independent from its previous luxury group owner, GP, along with its sister company, Ulysse Norden, 
can do and will do incredible things. Okay, now we'll talk about the thumbnail watch, which is this Rolex Cellini Date. And this is a wonderful watch, now discontinued, that I actually find more impressive than the new Rolex Perpetual 1908. First of all, we've got a spectacular blue galvanized sunray dial with deeply grooved rayon. We also have alpha style hands, a mini sunray inside the little date wheel over at three o'clock. We'll move everything out of the way. The watch does have hacking seconds. And because it has a date sub-register, the date here works a little bit differently than it does on most Rolex watches. As you set the date, more or less the way you would set the date on a Rolex GMT Master, we have this independent hour hand that allows you to travel and reset your time zone. And if you do roll across the international date line, you can set the date forward and backwards. The watch is 39 millimeters in diameter and beautifully made with a fluid polished case, coined case back, coined bezel, being 39 millimeters in diameter, it wears quite nicely. It's a automatic winding, chronometer certified movement in there that has a 48 hour power reserve and all of the refinements you'd expect of a Rolex sports watch movement, albeit with a slightly different function due to the way the hour hand and the date operate. This is how a Rolex dress watch done right should look. If the Cellinis of the last generation, this generation, had had display case backs, I feel like they would have been a success. They came so close and frankly, this is better than the dress watch Rolex is offering today. All in white gold and 39 millimeters. Let's take a look at a 2019 release from a watch brand that is a little bit like Gerard Perigo, hugely underrated. This is the Bridge One from Laurent Ferrier, and it is intended to be inspired by the Passerelle de Lille in Geneva, a bridge across which Laurent Ferrier himself often walked as a student and later a watchmaker in Geneva. You can see it as a fluid, unconventional form that's actually a lot more sensuous and curvaceous than the actual Passerelle de Lille. This is stainless steel, so you're not paying for precious metal here. It's got a lovely gray anthracite dial with white gold, Roman numeral 12 and white gold Essegai spear style hands. We also have a lovely grained or grané finish to the dial base. And then on the back with a 80 hour power reserve, we have this movement that was designed in collaboration with La Fabrique du Temps in Geneva. The finishing is world class with a ruthenium coat, bevels a mile wide, which you could see as they light up right here. You'll also appreciate that it is free sprung with six position adjustment, which is actually better than a lot of chronometers. A beautiful vintage inspired click spring, rounded, black polished all the way around. And you could see that we do have a couple of interior angles here on the cock for the escape wheel, as well as the adjacent structure for the train wheels. So they're not pinching pennies. It's a large watch, I'm not gonna lie. It is a timepiece about 34 millimeters wide from lug end to lug end, and then about 47.5, 48 millimeters from lug to lug. So this was fairly large for a Laurent Ferrier. That said, there is a camber to the case that mitigates against fit issues, and it's only about 12 and a half millimeters thick, so it sits low enough on the wrist that if you have a wrist big enough for it, it will sit underneath the cuff. And it's a glorious example of how great work is being done by brands with uncompromising quality outside the unfortunately small circle of hugely hyped independence. And while Laurent Ferrier is an etablisseur, buying the best parts available and then finishing, regulating them and assembling them, that was how Vacheron did business for most of its first 250 years. Ferrier in that tradition is making beautiful watches with the best pieces, and I believe that deserves a lot more respect than it gets. In 2008, Mont Blanc, 11 years into its watchmaking journey, decided that short of its ultra haut de gamme Villeray Minerva watches, it was gonna launch something that would inspire respect in Mont Blanc watchmaking, but out of its Le Loque factory where it could afford to build watches in larger volume than the few hundred a year that come out of Villeray. And the Nicolas Riosec chronograph was born, a watch that is a standard bearer for Mont Blanc complicated watchmaking and value. Here we have the Riasec Monopusher Chronograph, 43 millimeters in steel. The first thing you can see is that the design is designed to echo the engineering achievements of chronograph watch pioneer Nicholas Riusek. So that's where the design comes from. Now we do have a second time zone that hides underneath, well actually, 
you can see it hides underneath the local time. You can actually superimpose them, and they're both in a 12-hour time scale, so they move in sync, so they never become desynchronized. So you can really clean up the dial when you don't need that second time zone. But you can see how there's a day-night indicator here. Now, you can see that's how the system works acting as a day-night distinction for the central time when the two hands are synced up. But you can also see that I can adjust my local time independently. The local time will adjust the date off to the right, whereas the travel time, or the time where you are not, is keyed to this day-night indicator. So I know, for example, where it is day and where it is night. Now, I also have these lovely scrolling scales for chronograph minutes and chronograph seconds down at the base of the dial. And then flipping it all over, I have this lovely Manufacturer MBR200 automatic. It has approximately 68 hours of power reserve. It has a column wheel with a vertical clutch, a free sprung balance, a full balance bridge, lovely fire blued screws. And you can see though the finish on the Leloc Mont Blanc watches is typically more mechanical than artisanal. It's also very neat and attractive. And this is just about as good as it gets out of the Leloc manufacturer location. A timepiece designed to go head to head with the likes of Gégère Lecoult, Zenith, Glossuta Original, and even brands like Omega and Rolex at the high end. This is a superb watch with a very original design that will never be mistaken for anything else. A really special piece, lovely, attractive, and a great example of why Mont Blanc as a watchmaker needs to be taken seriously. This is a timepiece that is immensely appealing. The only restriction being you do need about a 15 centimeter circumference wrist to wear it. You can see my wrist of 16 is approaching the limits. I could go a little bit smaller but not much so 16 centimeters circumference or larger and while it does have loom it does not have a lot of loom so I'm going to just give you that quick demonstration right there if you want a lot of loom I've got just the thing a watch that is literally named for its loom or what was once upon a time a less radioactive luminescent material used by Officine Panerai as a supplier to the Italian military. Well, this is a much newer watch than those. Launched in 2022, this is a limited series of 250 pieces in titanium, the PAM 1299. Now, the 1299 is the Luminor regatta flyback and the nice thing about it is it is packed with features so if you were that panerai guy who always felt that it was a nice watch but not technically interesting this one is going to bowl you over on the other hand if you're a very traditional paneristo and you think they should be simple preferably only two hands and manual wind this is probably not your panerai watch so let me show you a few things here first take note this is a flyback chronograph. Reset and restart with one push of the reset trigger. Second, like an old Lemagne chronograph, we have central chronograph seconds, but also central chronograph minutes. So you get a 60 minute scale around the outside. It is a regatta timer. So we have this flyback so we can time events that occur in rapid succession. But we also have a tachymeter scale outboard, which you'll note is calibrated to relatively small numbers because we're dealing with the speed of sailboats, not race cars and airplanes. There are a lot of underlying features too that you could miss at first glance, like the ability to program this regatta timer. See the programmable scale up at the top? Well, I can actually set the minute hand back and use this as a countdown feature. Eight minutes, nine minutes, 10 minutes, I can easily do that, then start it up, and by the time the timer gets to zero, I know that's my cue to start my match, which is one race within a regatta. And you can use it to program all the way out to 15 minutes in advance. Because this is based on the 9000 series, you can see that when I pull the crown out to hack the seconds, I also engage zero reset seconds right there. So I can more easily synchronize my watch to a reference time. And the chronograph uses a combination of a column wheel and a vertical clutch. 
On the back, you can see twin mainspring barrels, three days of power reserve, and for durability and shock resistance, we have a free sprung balance. We also have Panerai's upscale quick release system for the strap, so you're not gonna risk disfiguring the lugs with a screwdriver, and it doesn't have that cheap spring bar system that Panerai phased in heavily following 2015. This is using the other system, the previous system, that is a lot more upscale and expensive to make, but this watch is worth it. Now, one of the advantages of having a watch with a column wheel chronograph is that it's very crisp to operate. And the vertical clutch means that there's no jump or stagger or leap or extraneous movement when you start the chronograph. It proceeds into motion. It does not go flying forwards the way a lateral clutch does. And I will show you, once again, this watch is famously luminescent, including the sub-registers. It also has the legendary device protecting the crown. It's 100 meters water resistant. You lock and unlock it like so. It gives you a lot more protection than a standard crown because you can't hit the crown perpendicular. And it's tough to jump in the water and drown your watch without noticing because this is easy to see. It also preserves the crown seal because it doesn't require you to thread the stem through the crown seals repeatedly, and it makes it easy to lock and unlock the crown when your hands are wet, sweaty, or gloved, which they might be during a regatta. Now, it is a Luminor in the 1950 case at 47 millimeters in titanium. It's big, but as with a Portuguese, a Panerai Luminor is designed to look big. So while this is huge and it looks huge, I would wear it because that is the style with Panerai. Legible, large, functional, instrument-like. This may not be a utilitarian instrument for a fascist frogman during World War II, but perhaps a more agreeable image, that of a modern-day yachtsman. Yeah, this is large, legible, and a bit too big for gentle company and polite conversation, but perfect for having a day out on the water. So that's a really cool piece, and it's great. Grade 5 titanium, which is the good stuff. There's great value in the watchmaking world, and while we often get hung up on a few models from a few names, don't forget that you can still get great watches from major name brands that sell for a lot less than they did new and are always available. When I went to SIHH in 2017, the Blue Dial JLC Masters were my best in show. So what we have here is a Master Ultra Thin Reserve de Marche Power Reserve, and we have a dial that is both brushed metallic sunburst and blue lacquer to create a totally unique effect. Since 1948, there has been an almost continuous presence in the Lecoult and Jaeger Lecoult catalog of an automatic winding power reserve indicator watch. Initially, it was the caliber 41 Powermatic, which was a bumper auto. Today, it's the Reserve de Marche line, 39 millimeters by 10 millimeters thick in steel. It offers a manufacturer automatic free sprung caliber on the reverse side that's been through the master 1000 hours control with a timing tolerance allowed of minus one plus six seconds. Unidirectional winding with ceramic rotor bearings, 43 hour power reserve, free sprung balance beating at four hertz and genuine fire blued screws. You can see the case is quite thin to the point that the case back wraps around the stem tube assembly of the crown. And on the wrist, it is super compact, flat, light, easy to wear. It's a dress watch, yes, and it's a unisex option, but being steel with the blue dial, it's also fairly sporty. The strap is a little stiff, which is forcing me to pull it tight, but as it breaks in and softens up, it'll wear even better. Now, one thing I like about the strap here is that we have JLC's recent inclusion of pull tab spring bars, so you can pop the strap off the case easy, but also on this latest generation, Shishere Lecoult folding clasp, which I believe is generation four for them since they started doing folding clasps, there's this little push button down here, which allows you to pop the strap off of the buckle as easily as you pop the strap off of the case, so you can really swap the strap quickly using nothing but your fingernails. This is a really fun piece. My favorite detail, actually, it's not necessarily the blue dial, which I like. It's the half-frosted Dauphine hands, which make for a super subtle but very effective contrast, so you can read it at any angle. Back in the 90s, Franck Muller was the rock star independent watchmaker. He was really one of the first. He made his name as an indie artisan in the 80s, but in the 90s, he commercialized his name and built watches that were considered the hottest thing available 
outside of a major brand, Franck Muller was a rock star in the 90s. And while the company is generally known for its tonneau cases, it also built a number of classically inspired watches in very small runs, often for national markets like Germany or Italy. And in particular, a series of watches much like this were built for the Italian market in only a few dozen copies. Those were 36 millimeters, this is 39. And the watch you see here is a tribute to those watches, which were in the 90s in turn, a tribute to the great Patek Philippe 1463 chronograph. So what we have here is actually a modern tribute to those 90s francs. This is the Grail Watch 2 from a company created by Rake and Revolution magazine founder Waco. Uh, collaborations with watch brands under the Grail watch label. And while the idea of doing collaborations with independent creators is not necessarily a new one, it's been done many times. The watch is fresh. It's a combination of a Franck Muller 90 style round case and classical dial, steel 39 millimeters and only 50 pieces made with a Le Mans 1872 base as would have been used back in the 1990s on these watches. The dial is super classical with steel cabochon for the hours and then applied breguet, Arabic numerals 12 and 6. We have a tachymeter scale on the dial as it would have been during, for example, the 40s and the 50s when the original 1463s were being made. And they were phased out in the late 60s, but they always used a tachymeter on the dial, which is a, a feature of watches generally conceived before the 60s. We have blued leaf style hands, which are gorgeous. On this watch, not only was it three millimeters larger in diameter than the 90s version, but the sub registers are a little bit bigger to make them easier to read. You can see we have Tasti Tondi domed and fluted style pushers, another tribute to the 1463. This lovely tiered and stepped bezel, flip it all over. That 1872 is the two register version of the moon watch caliber, the 1861. And so it's very similar in architecture, but this is a lot more like a moon watch caliber 1863, which was the better finished display case back version. If you look here, you can see that the bevels on the chronograph components, as well as the chronograph bridge, nicely executed, rounded and mirrored, and the screw heads black polished. Of course, the bridges are made of brass, rhodium plated, so they have stripes across their top and bevels on their edges. Whereas the chronograph components, the clutch, the levers, horns, and recentering hammers, they also have beveling on their sides, but they have satination across their tops, and all screw heads are black polished. Power reserve, manual wind, is 46 hours. The beat rate is three hertz, and although it is a cam chronograph, the tuning is as good as any column wheel, and I do mean that. It sounds great, it feels even better. Throw it on the wrist, and you can see this is really the kind of Franck Muller I could love. I'm not a huge fan of the brand. They just don't interest me that much. Most of the most interesting stuff, the true complications, made decades ago and not necessarily representative of what they build today. But this watch right here is equipped with a new old stock 90s Le Mania movement and a style that is essentially timeless, dating back to the 1940s on the Patek. It looks just as good today, and it's easy to wear, being short across the wrist. This is for him, this is for her, this is unisex. This is also for the vintage watch snob who doesn't want to deal with the hornet's nest of counterfeits, damaged watches posing as patination and also Franken watches on the vintage market. This is a way to go vintage with no compromises. All right, finally, I end with what might be in my top five watches of all time. It's not the most complicated. It's not the most expensive watch on today's show. But anyone who knows me knows how I feel about this watch. This was a Zenith Boutique exclusive that came out in 2013 based on the Captain Windsor annual calendar that bowed in 2010. 42 millimeters in stainless steel, this boutique exclusive is defined by two features, one of which is a smoked precious metal palladium dial. And note, unlike Moser, and I've actually got a Moser here just to demonstrate. Moser does what most do with smoked fumé or vignette dials. Light at the center, dark at the edge. This actually has a band of light palladium that stretches from 10 to 4, with the dark poles being at approximately 1 and 7 on the dial. And yes, 
It's made of palladium, precious metal PD, and it is a solid palladium dial disc. We have here beautiful polished applique Arabic numerals. I love the font they chose for that four. The hands at center are satinated and polished. No loom was used to give it a cleaner look. Now, of course, this is an El Primero base which means you have that wonderfully smooth sweeping 10 beat per second chronograph hand. A feature I adore here is the use of a 60 minute chronograph register, something you generally don't see as most chrono registers are 30 or 45. This is really an exception. Now we'll show you how the annual calendar system sets. It's the Ludwig Oxlund system developed by the genius calendar specialist who made his name first as a clock restoration guy for the Vatican before moving to Ulysse Norden where he became famous for celestial complications and calendars whose simple appearance and operation belied their underlying complexity. Well here, with just seven additional wheels added to the El Primero, he created an annual calendar based on the system he devised for the MIH watch in the 2000s and today uses on his Ox und Junior watches. Now pull the crown out all the way because that's where you set the calendar on an El Primero. And you can see how we have a quick set for the date that also drives the month on the calendar system. So you have this annual calendar that only needs to be adjusted once during the jump from February to March each year, one correction annually. Flip it all over again. 42 millimeter case was part of the Captain series of El Primero Chronos. And we've got a automatic winder with 50 hour power reserve, 10 beats per second, 36,000 vibrations per hour, lateral clutch with a super crisp column wheel, and a downright handsome architecture that's always been a distinctive feature of the El Primero. It's a bi-directional winder, so it's nice and smooth with its 50 hour power reserve. You can see they thought of everything, even giving you this little kerf next to the crown so you can more easily dig your nail in to set. And this being an El Primero, you can easily see the chronograph clutch in action, and you can see the column wheel. And it's got a modern Zenith strap. Zenith, for the last decade at least, has been using rubber underneath its leather straps to ensure the longevity of the leather and also a more supple and soft feel against the wrist. We've got a full deployment clasp, and this watch is so fresh that the original owner did not even remove the packing stickers from the clasp. So it is about as clean as you would have found it in the boutique had you bought it at a boutique back in 2013. These are rare. I've seen about three of them in nine years. And you can see on the wrist, it's big, but it's a beautiful fit. Look, this is the most visually spectacular watch, the most complicated, the most beautifully decorated that I showed you today. But this is the watch I want most. If you feel as I do, reach out to me. For this or any watch on today's show, tmasso at thewatchbox.com and have a great weekend.